fucking hell. Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Joe Football Show. I've <laughs> I've done basically i've just done a mad intro for about 15 minutes which i was going to pat myself on the back for uh, i've just give this massive introduction to to the sif generals in gabe and uh, and and connor welcomed in my favorite italian andrea russo and then realize we're not even live so i can see people in the comments saying oh just give joe some time he's beat he's beat and then i'm like hang on a minute we're live what are you on about and then it turns out that we weren't. And uh, Connor was just going off on a mad eulogy saying everything's totally fine at the football club and I need to relax. <laughs> yeah, you and now, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the comments were defending you like people have been defending the club saying, oh, just give time. We'll sort it out. There's time left. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's mad. I can't believe it. I'm really, really sorry. I felt like such a div. What an idiot. Um, yeah. <laughs> Standard. Great lineup. Great, Rob. I'm absolutely buzzing myself to welcome Connor back and have Gabe back as well uh, from the debrief, the one Leeds uh, crew. Um, let's get straight into it. Before we before we touch the Shrewsbury game, obviously, I've been saying now for a bit that, that my old rhetoric at the minute is, and I think there's a little bit of validity, validity to it, is the fact that the 49ers, yes, there is still three weeks. And actually, Gabe, I'm going to come to you on this. They've been here since 2018, right? They've kept one of the the gaffers in charge, in effect, in, in, in Angus Kinnear. Has anything actually changed? Because I know you might have a different... Because at the minute, Gabe, I'm looking at it going, it's almost like the same fecking situation. What What's actually happening? I'm going to validate part of your point of view before I challenge the rest of it. So externally facing, it takes time to prove change, right? So I don't think the attitude should just be by default for Leeds fans to say, well, everything's changed, clean slate. You're quite right. They've been at the club for a while. I will emphasize this, that minority ownership, it seems to most people that you can just say what you want, come it's just not how it works. Well, when there's that kind of money going around, you will never, ever, ever have a minority owner go out and, and criticize the majority owner. That's a good way to get your voting power yourself removed. While uh, and you, it's not like you can withdraw the investment then. So, listen, the new way of operating, what we've seen, is only a couple months, right? Uh, the, the the sale got ratified at the beginning of June, right? So, so far we've had a keeper signed for less than half a million quid, a central midfielder who looks like he's going to be good business for a sign. And neither of them had a whole lot of press around them. I think Darlow had a bit more because there's more speculation about him from the beginning. So listen, it's going to, it's a, we're stuck between a rock and a hard place because we've been conditioned for leaks and conditioned to listen for things coming from the club. And it's not really the way this regime works. And listen, anybody that says they know how the 49ers works is that they're also sort of speculating. So one way or another, I would say that, yeah, I think that a lot of work is probably happening behind the scenes. But because of things like financial fair play, we're just not going to be able to splash the kind of money that I think that most people want us to splash. But that being, I mean, Joe, like I can't begrudge you an opinion of dissatisfaction. Who's looking mm. at this side right now and our in injuries happening right now? Nobody should be satisfied. It's naive to be satisfied. I'll, yeah. I'll withhold full judgment and wait for the 49ers to have a full window. But I think, Connor, you, we've both been saying this, and met, it's not just us. Many have been saying this. Hang on, because the beginning of the season is going to be a bumpy ride. Yeah. Yeah. I just... <laughs> I, I agree. Bear noises now. <laughs> no, no. I agree with you to an extent, right, about... I get how... I don't get because I'm not a business guy, bloody hell, but I understand that they're not the majority, so therefore, but for me, it almost feels a carbon copy in terms of even, not, maybe not how we're operating, but what's, why come out and say you're going to be aggressive if after, I, I'm, and this is what I want to ask people as well is, how can we be so sure that between now and the end of the window, which is in three weeks time, they're going to get deals done when up to this point they've got two? Yeah, I mean, on one hand, aggression isn't necessarily defined as spraying out a bunch of money. I think it's engaging in a lot of conversations with a lot of different players and agents, which I imagine they're doing. And the thing is, look, all we can do is speculate when you have a club that doesn't leak, right? So these are all fair points. I think what I would say is 
if business isn't done by the window close, then every content creator has every right to rake them over the coals and say, nothing's different at a fundamental level, or there has to be a damn good reason for us not to spend. And again, I do think that the financial fair play, absolutely. It, the only thing I'm not clear about, and maybe any of you, the rest of you three can can specify this. There are different FFP rules for premiership clubs and there are for yeah, championship yeah, clubs. Is, yeah. The margin of expenditure uh, versus revenues uh, is different. I don't know how much of the rules carry over for the last two or three years you were in the prior division versus the time spent in the new division. Because what I will say is if the rules for the championship immediately apply when you're here, then Leeds can't spend a lot of money. Can't. Mm. We, we've, mm. We're in the red for the business done this year. What We're $4 million in the red for players gone out, players come in, simply because of the boneheaded contracts Victor Orta left us in, which are mandatory loan clauses. It means that all these other clubs are getting 40, 50, 60, sometimes 70 or $80 million for shipping their players out as a championship club. Nine players out, and we've recouped four million quid. That's mm. not good enough, especially when we spend over eight million. We're already we're in the red for it. If you had told me nine players go out, we bring in two, or is it three? And mm. uh, uh, and and subsequently, we're still in the red. I would tell you you're crazy. Thank you very much, Victor Orta. Mm. Do you know what? I, th I don't know if it is the same, and I'm not going to profess to know, but I think it's profit and sustainability, which is different to FFP, right? I'm not too sure, though. I might be wrong. But I swear in the championship, it's profit and sustainability, and that's why FFP you get does apply three... to the championship. They're, it's just a different threshold. No, that's what I mean, though. Different name, okay. right? So I don't think it's the same as in what I'm trying to say is I don't think it'll carry over from the Premier League down because you get the parachute payments. I don't know. Yeah, people might be able, be, be able to tell us in the yeah, comments. I it's, it's fine. I think it's different. Yeah, Joe. Before, yeah, the last thing I want to say, Joe, because I've talked a lot. Uh, Joe, do you honestly think that the prior regime, like, because we don't know the financials for last year, we know if the two yeah. years prior, we know some numbers, but given the way they ran the football side of this club, in the fact, uh, in the staffing, all that kind of stuff, do you really think that the 49ers are coming into a healthy financial situation at the club? I do not. Um, think so. No, but what I would also say in response to that, and I was going to ask this question as well. We're almost letting them off because of the auto contract situation as though the 49ers didn't know about them. Which, if they came into the football club not knowing about that, then there's an issue there because why aren't they doing due diligence? Due diligence? Why haven't they checked these contracts? They will have. Basically, they've got a guy in charge there in Angus Kinnear who, was, who knows about these contracts and has been there since day dot. So you can't tell me like when they've come in, Angus has got, guess what, I've just found Parag. These contracts have these release clauses. The facts are they knew. So they knew what they were walking into. You know, we've got we've got Jordan Speed talking on Sky or whatever saying, oh, yeah, it's actually a better deal for the football club if we get it right because we bought it cheaper, which, which makes sense on the face of it. Not saying he'll know the full ins and outs. But the point is, the, the point still stands for me is that those that took over and they're talking about being aggressive and all this sort of stuff, the... <laughs> They knew about it, so therefore, for me, it's 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 BS. I feel like I'm hammering you here, Gabe. Let's let's okay. let's switch it over, C Connor. What are your thoughts just Connor. on that situation? Yeah, <laughs> I think he agrees. I, I, although he looks like he's working and not really listening. Can you hear us, mate? Yeah, I can, mate. You just boring. Yeah. Me. Um, <laughs> no, it's, yeah, no. I, th I think get yeah, we were speaking about it last night. I think Gabe's bang on. Um, uh, but I also I'm in the middle as well, Joe. Because I, I agree with what you're saying, and I think there's a way of of being aggressive in the transfer market. You know, we, when Burnley came into the championship, we saw Ian Matson, we saw Nathan Teller, mm -hmm. we saw Taylor Howard Bellis. And what's the common denominator there? It's the fact that they were aggressive in the loan market as well. And I think all mm -hmm. of us naturally think that it has to be a 15, 20 million pound player that has to come into Leeds United, aka Yoel Perot or someone of that ilk. And that would be nice. Is it realistic right now? Probably not with the amount of players that we've sold in the past five years. I mean, who have value we sold in the last five years, apart from Rafinha and Phillips, it's all been incomings. It really has. So mm -hmm. that was always coming, going to come and bite us at some point. But I, I don't understand how the rules play a part in the loan market because I think there's, there's a way to manipulate and dictate that in your favour. And I just do not understand right now. I mean, we heard something, I think it was YP, the Athletic, that were discussing apparently Leeds were almost waiting for clubs to get 
to get the house in order and, and decide who was available for loan and who wasn't available for loan. But we still seen players like Callum Doyle go to Leicester from Manchester City uh, on loan and, and him start yeah. the week. And loan players are active. You can be proactive yeah. with going out there and doing that. And I think right now, this squad is in such a weak shape. And listen, this the, the, the result at the weekend wasn't a pro you know it's not it's not doomsday it's not no no the problem is it's the long-term health of this squad i do not want to see archie gray playing for Leeds united week in week out no. because of his development he's 17 yeah, i heard you saying that last night and i agree I you agree. know oscar was saying it last night what about lewis cook lewis cook who played nearly 100 games for Leeds united and then has yeah. gone on to, to subsequent injury after injury after injury at bournemouth yeah. there is a pattern there there was a pattern with Michael Owen when he was at Liverpool, played hundred games. Then he's been injured for the, then he was injured for the, for the next three to four years. You know, it was it was a pattern which followed Michael Owen throughout his entire career. The whole point is that this squad needs beefing up, and even if it was mm -hmm. it, it is us utilizing a market which maybe isn't preferential to us. It's it's us not going out and buying a player that you know we own. You know, we've still done that previously and got in a Ben White and Eddie and Ketty, mm. and it's been very profitable for us in the long yeah. term. So for me, I agree with what Gabe's saying. I think that makes complete sense. I think we understand that anyway as a fan base, but surely there's got to be a bit of manipulation around that in terms of mm. how Leeds can bring players in. 100%. 100%. I agree with you. And uh, Andrea, obviously you mentioned Doyle there, but you've also got Kazadei as well, who looks like oh, he's on yeah. his way to Leicester. Nice he's stuff. not now being included in the Chelsea squad. Uh, not even in the, the numbers. I think Lewis Hall got a number, but then it's been found out on Lord to Palace. So not that that means anything, but Kazadei moving there. I mean, we're seeing so, even... what. Yeah, what's frustrating for me, I've seen Coventry buy this Hadji right. I don't rate him, by the way. I watched him at the World Cup. I didn't... Well, he, he didn't play loads, but I just see all these other clubs doing a lot of business and we're literally sat twiddling our thumbs. And I get... I sort of... Andre, I sort of can accept the way in which they were doing it and looking at like they were focusing on one target, getting that, then we move to the next one. But it just seems to have stalled. And I have no confidence at this moment in time. And, and folks, this isn't a cut and dry opinion. This can change, right? You know, people seem to, you get caught in 4K and you've got to stay with that opinion for the rest of your life. You can't change your mind, but, Joe. Yeah, no, exactly. This is what's really frustrating as well. No, but Joe, have you, have you changed your mind? <laughs> has to change your mind on YouTube, mate. Got to be a man of conviction, Joe. Oh yeah, you can change your mind or learn uh, new things. In, 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 in the other, we need to remind ourselves also the context. You know, when yeah. uh, in, in in the time we're when we're giving these old opinions, you know, right now we're giving we're, we're saying that of course because the specific situation is we have basically 13, 14 players fit to play yeah. and uh, eleven out, so it's the Terrible. And two games in four days, by the exactly, way. Exactly, exactly. And tomorrow, two games lot, in four like days. I said, like I said the other day, you know, a lot of the players who played a major part and played a lot of minutes during, on on Sunday will have to play again this week and then play again versus Birmingham. Imagine that yeah. another player gets fatigued or injured yeah. worse. <laughs> then what? What happens? Uh, yeah. I'm getting impatient. You know, I agree with Gabe. We need to wait till the end of the window because. Uh, there's still there's still this want to, for the 49ers to prove uh, what aggressive means. But uh, on the other hand, I agree also on the fact that the financial situation needs to be clear, and uh, the loan closes have slowed down everything. But like yeah. like you just you said, Joe, they 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 knew about the closes because they were majority owners. So absolutely, they knew the situation they were getting into. And my opinion is that maybe they they thought that by now they would have sold. Play some players out and uh, got some cash. Probably they thought that we we will uh, we will have blocked. We will keep some players like Weber or uh, like mm. Weber. You know they they were they were planning with Bob and then Weber, Weber used this uh, his long close. But uh, right now, if the plan is uh, like the chess match, you know, one out, one in, one uh, uh, black piece and one white piece. Uh, you know, uh, mm. like a chess match. Now it needs to change because the injury situation is. Uh, Compromising right now the start of the season. Yeah, exactly. For me. Because yeah. I I knew it for stand. You know, when I was at Rajana, we we started the season after the the club was reformed, and we started the season right now in the month of August with with thirteen players, and it affected the season massively, mm. massively because the manager didn't have the time to uh, fit the players that uh, came after after the end of the window, of course, in 
and it affected the whole shape of the team because of course like yeah. i said if you got if you got some players like for example nyonto adam sanarison will leave you plan with mm -hmm. them and they leave uh, let's say the 28th of august you know you have to start yeah. to change the plan again yeah. you have to bring new players rush and get new players in again and and farc mm -hmm. will have little to no time to adapt them and then they will have the yeah. like their yeah. apprentice <laughs> period the padawan period you know under farc eh, to to get to know yeah. the system during the start of the season uh, and it's not an ideal situation so right now i'm i'm sorry to say that because i like the fact to for uh, when they focus on one target and get the best target yeah. they want to get but now we have to rush there's no time the injury yeah. situation has changed everything has changed it, everything because yeah. like Connor said he was right you know we can rush gray we can rush other players like uh, Cresswell. they need to have their time to develop mm -hmm. otherwise you 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 risk to uh, in italy we say uh, bruciare bruciarli burn them you know yeah like, burn out yeah. burn out yeah, burn yeah. Out, you know to to mm -hmm. get them to a level they're not ready for yet because they mm -hmm. need to develop slowly and uh, step after step so right now i'm sorry but the the whole uh, strategy needs to change 100 there needs to be the, there needs to be urgency yeah there needs to be urgency for me because... i mean how's 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 if you're looking at daniel farker as well look at daniel farker do you think he expected to get to this point already no, and I the do. squad the squad I, you I, do I, I don't no. think he did. I, I don't no, think he was no. counting on. But listen, anybody. Fark is a pretty meticulous guy, right? I think yeah. he would have looked at the injury record of some of these players, and it. Look, he's going to continually say that we need reinforcements at every single position. He, ba he, ba right. he basically says every position back. He does. <laughs> he does. And and the reason for that, in my opinion, being even the ones we have, we would slate as starters. We have a, a lot of poor injury records here. Now there seems yeah. to be some. Confused yeah, in no, the comment section careful. about there needs to be there needs to be a discussion about that game at some point because I, I I'm not a, a, a head of medicine a doctor but it's the same medical team and we're still getting all these issues so right look at Thirpo too look at Thirpo too he, he was uh, rehabbing yeah. and now got injured again in his, in his rehab and there's mm. no left back really apart from Byram and an adaptive right back so you have Dallas who played as a left back multiple times injured you have Thirpo mm. injured Byram who had uh, I'm sorry. Uh, an injury record recently, mm -hmm. but right now, hopefully, he stays fit because, uh, like we, we we saw on uh, on Sunday, but four year he... contract, Andrea. That, that's the thing that for, for me, you don't give a guy a four year contract if you don't imply that, yeah, we're going to push for promotion this year, but this is going to be a bit of a project. There seems to be some confusion in, in the comment section about why are we doing all these loans, guys. Mandatory yeah, release yeah. clause. Exactly. It's, what that means is, if a loan bid comes in for a player at a certain amount, they yeah, have the to ans, accept it. They have. They have no choice. Yeah. So that's why you have like what nine players go out, and only one or two of them were actually sold for any money. Was uh, was it um, Cock and um, what's our striker's name? My God, Rodrigo. Rodrigo. Thank you. Jeez. I um, got no money actually. Oh, uh, no great! No awesome. Money. Even better. Just Rodrigo. Just Rodrigo. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Rodrigo so we got three million Rodrigo quid for the whole for the whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I, yeah, I think yeah. I, I think he'll have still expected to come in and buy now. Hundred percent. Going into the second game of the season, I think he'd have expected, even when we're looking at injuries and stuff like that, I think he'd have still expected some of his profiles to be a, to to have been brought in at this point in time. A central second midfielder, potentially a goal scorer, a left back. All these profiles that the squad needed invested in anyway, but Connor, regardless, from the very of start, and regardless of who went. From the very start, he said in the interviews, the, the tough thing about these contracts and the situations we have to wait. That like he said that from like the very off. Remember, he was like, "That's the difficult thing. We don't know who's staying, who's staying, who's going. The contracts make it very difficult." I think that ideally, of course, he wants to have everyone in, but I think part of the managing expectations is it's probably going to be late in the window. I don't imagine, I can't imagine if someone, like I think the worst, the worst situation would be if a team comes in, release clause for Adams, like right at the end of the window or comes in for some of these other guys. Adams is already going, right? right? We know yeah. Adams is going Chelsea this week. But if Chelsea drag their feet, Joe, this is what I'm, uh, I guess what I'm saying. Like if he doesn't go this week and they drag their feet and a couple of these players get their re uh, release clauses activated late in the window, then that really ha uh, handicaps us because on one mm -hmm. hand, we, we would need some of the funds, um, just under FFP rules to to offset, and then the other yeah. half of it is like, well, who can we buy? We'd be panic buying in the, on the last day. <laughs> so it is a tough situation, I, and I think I just think that the reason you go with a guy like Daniel Farca, outside of just the track record of getting people uh, getting teams promoted, is that he's a meticulous planner, and over a, a, a one, two, or three year plan, 
for promotion. I think that they there's an understanding that, that this first half of this season may be rough. Mm. Honestly, just I, given the situation that, that he was walking I, into. Yeah, I, I, he did say, uh, you know, the squad will look to totally different come the end of August. He, he, you know, he has said that. And I guess to an extent, you know, I, I, I do agree with you. But I do think at this stage, he'd, he'd have expected more than what we've got. I'm sure of it. But Maybe. yeah, it is what it is. I just want to just want to bring up this um, before you like um, take what I've said wrong. All I'm saying is I know he doesn't train the team. But who, the, and I, and it's not just on Rob here because, like I said, how can I speak? I'm not a guy on medicine. But there is one common denominator throughout all different managers. We had a manager that that some would say overtrained them. I don't agree with it, but some would say overtrained them. And then the next guy undertrained them to the point where they couldn't even finish fecking games. Mark Rocker couldn't get through a full ninety minutes after a full preseason what's with a, Jesse what, Marsh. What, what's a player, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> He's a pro. Do you have that if um, I speak meme? Because that, that's Connor's <laughs> Connor's meme. Yeah. Mark but, Mark. But, but, wrong, wrong league and wrong system. I think is the better thing. Yeah, yeah. Andre, don't speak facts. It's not allowed. <laughs> Stop it, man. But the point I'm trying to say, right, is the they've had even, opposite ends of the spectrum and they're still getting injured. You either get rid of the players because the constant crocs and i think there is a lot of a lot of that as well because furpo's shown he's never fit bamford's shown he's never fit so so these 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 issues with them but also you've got to factor in the uh the the people that are supposedly getting them back to full fitness i think at this point is that a discussion we need to be having or do i need to show up because I, I don't have a clue about physiotherapy and medicine or all like that well there are players that are always fit they just stink and like, 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 and we we have players like that, right? Who are available for selection? They're just poor, mm. <laughs> and we just so we just or like they decided who, to sign like them, who, Gabe? or they decided to sign a whole bunch of people with poor injury records. And also, yeah. you know, like there are also those players, and I'm not, you know, I don't think any of that. I have plenty of criticism for Ailing and Cooper and stuff, but I don't think either of them are, are these types types of guys. There are players that go to football clubs and love to spend time in the changing room. Not changing room, sorry. The treatment room. Um, <laughs> the changing room where they want to hang out. No, the treatment room. And uh, don't do a lot of playing. Uh, we, we've seen some. Um, and I, is Junior Furpo that kind of guy? Like, who knows? Um, I would question his commitment to getting on the pitch. Um, we've never really had definitive, hey, this is exactly what's wrong with him. Here's a clear timeline. Like, it's season after season of this. Does he want to be here? Does he ever look fussed? Mm. I'm not That's a good point. IDK, but like I, I do think <laughs> yeah, questions need questions do need to be asked, right? But like some of the players have poor injury records and we've not reinvested in replacing them. Some of it is sentiment, I think. Uh, but part of it is just poor business making. Um but honestly, I think there are some players here that maybe don't have the commitment to get back on the pitch. And Joe. Mm -hmm. For me, also talking about the strategy we were talking about before, I refuse to say that and to believe that Dalo has come to Leeds to be number the number two. No. I, yeah. I think I think they they, they talk by the, by by this moment, this stage of the season, that offers will have come for Melier, but no offers has really come for him. Mm -hmm. So, honestly, I, I I think that's why they say they were aggressive because maybe they thought that some of us would have come for certain players and we would have registered by now some exit and that didn't happen. And I think it's going to happen exactly what Gabe said previously. Some clubs will wait till the end of the window and activate the closing if they don't find the right replacements for the, or the right fit for, the, for, the, for, the, for yeah. those teams, you know. Like we did last, last season when we did when uh, the, the botch of Bamba Dieng, you know. When yeah, we didn't uh, board the plane and we signed on to you know? We will leave it to, till, till the last day on the window. And... Uh, I still I still think like players like Harrison and that they'll they'll, they'll be taken away because I just yeah. think he, he, these are players that can be got at a pretty cheap price and 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 yeah well I guess we'll have to see Lopetegu's just just left Wolves by the way they they're yeah. announcing Gary, Gary O'Neill yeah in the morning which is a bit of a <laughs> <laughs> well, that's um, Wolves down isn't it <laughs> yeah I know it's a bit of a mad one that isn't it um well, right okay we'll just quickly go through some super chats before we start chatting about Shrewsbury. Uh, Daniel 
<laughs> no, Daniel says, hey, Joe, I'm back from Connecticut. We need good vibes. I heard Gray played well on Sunday. He definitely did. Colin says, great lineup tonight, John Court. I'm starting to think we may as well be owned by the 69ers. The 49ers haven't had much of an impact so far. It's not a good sign so far. Need players ASAP. Uh, and Sh yeah, Sean says, fun. give Charlie a call, Connor. We need the players. Can you do that? Now then, mate. Yeah, we're shy. Do you fancy it? <laughs> no. All right. Call Sam no. Byron. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> no, he's not friends with Sam, man. He's not That's friends right. with Sam. That's <laughs> why I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> what anyone did I not, say earlier? Not, what anyone who's not what did friend, I say so. earlier on Twitch? I said, I think, <laughs> I think um because uh, because because Sam Byron made it and Connor didn't. I said that's why he's got to be in his bonnet <laughs> yeah, about him. I said the, the bastard. Yeah, I was like angry that. in his room. Yeah. I were so, better than him. I were better than him. Made the dartboard in there. <laughs> yeah. hey, class. Do you think he had a good game on on the weekend when he came on? He was good. Yeah, right? yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah I thought. Connor loved how many shots he took. At, oh, took at goal as well. Yeah, Connor was. Yeah, don't do let him shoot ever that. again. Don't let him shoot ever again. I got a knock. Well, on he's the... better than Dan James at shooting. I tell you that much. Hey, Bloody James, hell! James got one on target at least. Yes, Christ. he did. He did. Andrea is better than Dan J Dan James at shooting. I think. Right, Andrea. <laughs> oh, 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 I, I'm not another good, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> a humble man. That's what we'd like to see. <laughs> but let's let's switch it over, Andrea. I'm gonna I'm gonna hand over to you, brother. You've been doing a bit of a deep dive onto uh, shoes before us, right? Yep. Oh, uh, poor guy. Great. <laughs> oh, right. Jeez, Even I know they're in the one, right? You need, a, you need a hobby, mate. No, no. Honestly, uh, I like those kind of things, you know, when you have to do search about other teams and oh, see yeah. how they play against us. Like, Loki did that with Cardiff, and uh, he was right, actually, because in the first time they did that, exactly what, what he, it's amazing. he had. Uh, mate, he had I actually did that watch along, sounding like I knew what I was talking about. Because he'd done that pre-match, and I'm going, look, you can see the setup structure here. <laughs> People are like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, on, Let's go. On, on Shrewsbury, of course, uh, um, is a league, league Cup, not FA Cup uh, match. So uh, I, I think they are a typical mid-table uh, club in League One. Actually, they're not that bad. Of course, people say Shrewsbury. They don't think they because in League One they have you have clubs like now, like Derby County, Wigan. You know, clubs with uh, a lot of history, especially Derby County, not Wigan. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I don't think they're that bad. Honestly, they have a good squad. Of course, they have, like us. They have no depth. So let's see if yeah. the if the uh, if it works right now. Okay, let's see if now it works. Wait. Okay, I'm coming. Eh? You saw it. You saw it. They're a league yeah, up for I... my uh, my second club. I was going to hmm. say it. Like I'd seen some on Twitter about them being your thing, and I was like, "What? What, what were you getting at, Gabe? What was I getting about about Grimsby? No, about no, Shrewsbury. No, oh, Shrewsbury. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I won't. I won't pollute your channel with Grimsby. Chat. Is, is, is that bad? He's left the stream. <laughs> he, he, he's supposed to be sharing his screen um, because he's done a bit of a deep dive we'll wait for him to come back he will come back he'll be panicking now. no go on what were you saying about Shrewsbury I, I had nothing to say about Shrewsbury uh, I just... thought it was your favourite team or something no no, 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 no there's a, gr a joke oh. that Grimsby my, my favourite my favourite team it wasn't a joke he thought Grimsby were in the championship uh, I didn't uh, ever uh, say they were in the championship <laughs> Now people actually believe this because he repeated it enough. It never was came from my lips. Grimsby were in the championship. Harrogate, he, thought Town, he thought Harrogate Town and Grimsby were in the championship. <laughs> Harrogate exactly Town. Right I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> okay, Joe, 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 we, we, we can do like this because um, I think uh, Chrome has, uh, has a problem right now. So if okay. you can if you can uh, share the screen and uh, search on Google Shrewsbury Town Cheltenham, so use that that lineup and uh, yeah, just I, be, are, are they on them are they on them images you sent me earlier, bro? Also the images, if you if you wish. So okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, it was, yeah, was that okay. one? It was that one? Yeah. I feel like I mean, you know, like one of the do you remember those chats in like COVID where you're on like Zoom chats and you were yeah. learning things and you're about to get like a yeah. PowerPoint up and show me how to this do things. This is what it is, man. This is what yeah. it is. <laughs> like the interactive. Yeah, it's, more, it's very technical, to be fair. Yeah, it's a problem with Chrome. Actually, can cannot share the screen right now. I don't know why. Probably try to. But we move, as you say, right, Joe? Yeah. So right yes, now, yes, exactly, bro. You know, you yeah, I'm know. Learning, I'm learning the uh, <laughs> learning the syntax. Okay. The what? Uh, what? What are they called? 
<laughs> okay, uh, uh, the just syntax. Uh, brief, briefly speaking about the about Shrewsbury, of course, uh, they beat Cheltenham at the weekend one 0 strike from uh, Ryan Bowman actually a tap in from their keeper. The keeper didn't didn't cap the ball and they scored. <laughs> what uh, I I liked about them honestly, and uh, I, th- I don't think it'll be an easy contest honestly because of our, of our injury situation and the fact that they're starting eleven is very physical. They are all tall and physical. If you look at their starting lineup from the game against Cheltenham, uh, we don't have right now in the in in midfield physical players, and I think in the first half against Cardiff exactly pointed out that you know when especially when they were pressing Ampadu. Uh, have you found that? Have you found that, Joe? No, I'm struggling here, mate. Bro, you must really love football. No, just just step, just step on Google. Just step on Google. All the credit in the world, man. Honestly, that, <laughs> this yeah, is yeah, know, honestly right? it's ace. Let's search on Google Shrewsbury Town Cheltenham, and uh, the the result okay. will pop up. Then the lineups. So we can okay. use that like a, a typo. So, or, or otherwise, you can use the images I sent to you. To yeah, I'm trying to get the images up because my screen's broke, bro. It won't. Connor work. dies inside when he hears Shrewsbury Town. Like, he, just, yeah. he just hears the name and his, his <laughs> eyes glaze over. <laughs> so low down. <laughs> okay, let, let's see. Hey, oh, all right. There we go. There we go. Of course, Sorry, they bro. played the three, three, five, two at the weekend. Of course, against us in probably five, three, two. Uh, because of course they will sat deep and try to to do exactly what Cardiff did in the first half. Uh, you see, they have of course uh, uh, some players who are already known, like Flanagan used to be a Sunderland, for example. Even seen in the Sunderland till the sec- second season, you know, when uh, he was uh, he had a little bit of a row, uh, of a discussion with some Sunderland fans, you know. Um, of course, uh, they have three tall and, st- and strong centre backs at the back. Uh, with Marosi. Marosi also is, is a good keeper, honestly, to be fair, because he Slovakian, uh, moved to the UK uh, to, to study uni at Burnley. Uh, and then from them, he's played a lot of on one league and was spotted by Roberto Martinez. When he was there, he moved to Wigan. Then probably some of the Leeds fans based in Yorkshire, in South Yorkshire. And Doncaster, no, remember him at uh, Doncaster because he played like five seasons there, you know, got promoted from League 2 to League 1. Two then moved to, to Coventry. Even played some games in the championship, but uh, decided to to move last season back to to League One. So for the for the league, is a good play. Is a good uh, tall commanding. Yeah, how do you know that, man? That's like man. I do my research. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, picked up by Roberto Martinez. That's mad. That's mad. Yeah, six foot uh, four. It's similar to Darlo, actually. Uh, like a, a goalkeeper, they play with three at the back. On the left, they have uh, Joe Anderson, who is on loan from Sunderland. He's a product of the Academy of Everton, 22 years old, six foot two, like what I was saying, tall and strong mm-hmm. physically. Mm-hmm. All, all the three of them, of course. So he has four, he had four caps for appearances last season for Sunderland. He's fast, versatile. He used to play actually when he was in the Everton Academy as a uh, higher on the pitch, like where Shipley is right now, uh, as a left midfielder or as a left centre mid. But uh, when he was in the under 18s, he was uh, moved back to the to a centre back. So of course he. He uh, pairs pretty well with the other two because Flanagan is six foot four, and uh, Feeney is six foot three. So all the three of them are very strong on the ball. They don't have good feet, to be fair. They're not very good in playing the ball from the back. But uh, the back three line is tall and strong and good on the aerial balls and also very aggressive. They are very aggressive. So of course, without a proper striker, we'll struggle up front. We we'll have to mm-hmm. do exactly what we did in the second half. No, and even what Nyonto did in the first. Try to get in behind, move them. Try to get the, the market to follow you wide, like Leonto did in the first half. Or try to, uh, you know, interact and uh, pass the ball a lot, create narrowness uh, with the Sinistera. And, uh, for example, some of will pass the ball a lot between, the, between them and try to get them out of the line, you know. But, like I said, of course, uh, Feeney too. Flanagan in Anton Irish International. Uh, of course, the mo- one of the most experienced players they have, 31 years old. Uh, old style centre back, aggressive, not very good on the ball. I really don't like his positioning too, especially <laughs> when he was at Sunderland. And Finney, also another product of the Everton Academy, was promoted last season with uh, Carla United, the Cumbrian. He used to play rugby actually when he was uh, a kid, then moved to. So it, it shows you the type of, of, of team they have. Yeah, yeah, of course. He used to yeah. play rugby. They are very strong and told they'll be very aggressive tomorrow. Andre, and, out of and these yet, guys, and question yet. for you. Out of these guys, who is most likely to take a high boot to Sinistera's knee and end his season? Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Mr. Feeney over there. Feeney, oh, Feeney, oh, Feeney, yeah, yeah. Feeney is, is very aggressive. I used to play rugby too when he was in uh, a kid in Cumbria. 
So yeah, uh, I think that. Uh, have you, Adria, have you just have you just made that up, or is that true? What? No, you, no, is that, is yeah, that everything true? true. Everything to everything to yeah. I have all the notes. yeah. Trust me, man. This guy is this what this guy doesn't know, Connor. You would not believe. He bro. used to play rugby sure. in Cumbria. Yeah, I, I, I even I even have the name of the team actually. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't note note that. No. This guy. So... This guy tracked down Jason Bourne. <laughs> next, next week we're going to be on the debrief, and Connor's going to be talking about Feeney and his and his uh, and his career. He's <laughs> not going to be with this. Oh, no, he used to be a rugby player, strong and physical. Actually, if you want a comparison, it's like Cresswell, you know, in terms of uh, body shape and physicality. It's more aggressive. But mm. on the on the wings, you have you have on one side Shipley, but uh, he's in doubt for tomorrow because he got subbed off in, at the weekend uh, for an ox. So uh, they're not sure he's going to play. If he doesn't, he's not fit. Yeah, they're gonna play Banning um, in uh, instead of him uh, on the on the left and Winchester on the right. So of course Shipley and Winchester will drop down and they form a, a five back line when when we attack. Uh, actually, uh, of course uh, Winchester is more defensive minded. Northern Irish international just had one cup and was called up uh, in 2021. But uh, yeah, I think it should should still be. Still be in the in the setup of the North Nine North Nine National National Team, but uh... Andrea Bielsa. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to point out that uh, Andrea, uh, you're so articulate with this. If I had even said half of this stuff, they'd be like, "This uh, this yank doesn't know anything." He's just <laughs> <laughs> because Andrea is Italian. They're like, "Oh yeah, sounds yeah. great." This. He's got a lovely accent. He's just yeah. like a bulging. <laughs> <American. laughs> no, I, actually, I, I, I'm just trying to not be just just too deep too deep because it'd be boring instead so i'm just trying to pass very quickly between the players do you enjoy scouting teams like this is what i asked yeah, yeah. yeah it's good it's good it's you good. enjoy did scouting Mar did Marcelo Bielsa like this game of course you, did. you just get certain <laughs> types of people like this in the world not like me and you lazy <laughs> bastards Listen, I, I just can't imagine getting up in the morning and be like you know what i'm really just I'm begging to scout shrewsbury in league one today no honestly gabe i i knew uh specifically flanagan Curry, Bayless, Shipley, and Bowman, and Winchester. You, yeah, the other one, I didn't know them, honestly, too. You knew so, Noah yeah. Kenner, right? Noah, Noah Kenner, Kenner, number yeah. 42. Yeah, yeah. Of course. So, uh, Kenner will be their old midfielder. Of course, we remember him in the in the academy as an old midfielder, but also as a centre-back. So, it would be the man dropping down, trying to be like a, a wall in front of their back three, you know, trying to, to block the initiative when we go forward. He's not a... Uh, a playmaker. They're, they have actually two playmakers, and these are the two players around him: Perry on one side and Bellis on the other one. Because those two, actually, uh, Perry is a part of Wolves. We were talking about Lopetegui previously. He was at Cheltenham. He's a really good player to be fair for the league one, because he is a, a box-to-box player. But uh, like Bellis, they're both uh, you know advanced attacking players, both of them. So the play, the creativity, they interchange a lot. They invert a lot, like like we saw with uh, Sinistera and uh, and Somerville on Sunday. Bailey's played uh, also in the in the championship with uh, with Preston and uh, got promoted from League One with uh, with Wigan. So I think that they will drop down with Kenner and Perry and Bailey's and try to restart and counter attack with the two with those two. With Winchester and Shipley not up, not very open following the play this time, like they did with Cheltenham, because of course if you if you get too too high on the pitch. With the full box, you have the wingers of Leeds United uh, going in behind, like we saw with uh, Odaud and Bowler against us with Cardiff. So I think that their main their main threat will be Perry because he he moves a lot. He has a lot of free roam, like Bailey's, but he also gets in behind the two strikers, Bowman and Udo. So it's like a a number ten for them in certain situations. And uh, also another thing they do is that they create a lot of narrowness. They're very narrow and. Uh, that can be a a problem for them too, actually, because when they get very narrow and press, they also get very you know tight on one side, on one side, and they leave a lot of space on the other one. Honestly, because almost Jesse Ball esque. That sounds like there, bro. Yeah, like yeah, all yeah, tight, actually. tight over one side, quick switch. We're in. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, yeah, that's what we were saying, and it it, it is actually in one of the images of uh, I sent to you previously. Because they they get on one side and they leave a lot of space on the other one. So uh, just to finish it off, because of course uh, uh, it'd be interesting and very informing if it was like Real Madrid or Barcelona, but we're still <laughs> talking about Shrewsbury. But we don't have to underestimate them, honestly. Because if look at our current situation, we can afford to play 
all those youngsters tomorrow. And if we play mm -hmm. them, there's really no physical player. They're all physical. They're a physical team. So if we if it's a physical battle, we lose that physical battle. Yeah, that that was mm -hmm. the one. And yeah. Uh, yeah, this is their depth actually, because Benning will play if she plays and fit. They have on the striker. If you look at, at Udo and Bowman, the two um, the two strikers, of course, Bowman is like a target man. He's tall. He's like actually, um, yeah, six foot two. Of course, he plays also in Scotland with Motherwell. It's uh, like their uh, target man. So when they go for the long ball from the back, they go for Bowman. Udo can be compared for to like uh, Jonah Kinde or Leroy Lita. You know, it's like uh, they are, they are they are they play very very near each other. The two the two strikers. But Bowman usually stays central, and Udo goes to the sides, try to bring one of the defenders with him. So, or, otherwise, they combine with Bowman giving the ball one two touches to Udo going with the, to try to cut behind the defense. And uh, looking at the depth, they don't have much depth. You know, Benning is was at Port Vale, uh, so Bovada was in the Lingo Island. Mata, we don't know if he'll be able to play tomorrow because he's waiting for his work permit from uh, because he moved from Sligo Rovers from Ireland. The other ones, what earns. And Zra, they are all youngsters. They are all youngsters. So Matty Taylor, the manager, actually said that uh, they need uh, to bring in new players. It's like a mirror of our situation. I was right going to say, yeah. <laughs> in, in so do, one. so do do you expect Andrea then to for them to be largely unchanged? Yeah, I expect from the that. from the weekend. Maybe they'll play Benning instead of Shipley if he's not fit, and they'll play if the board permit uh, permit gets sorted in time for the game because they're still working on it. Mata. Uh, alongside Bowman, because they have two strong, tall players, and uh, of course, our long physical players in midfield is stressful. In in defense, is stressful. So they try to go for the long ball, and especially on uh, free kicks, you know, yeah, they have two strong targets men up front. And uh, I think it'd be a very good test for our youngsters if uh, some mm. some some of them get uh, the opportunity to play like JB or uh, you know other players, even Gray, you know. Because you, you get a, you get against a physical a physical team, and they they mm. are really a physical team. What 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 we we, we don't fear them, of course, because they are a league uh, below us. Yeah. Um, in League One, but uh, I think it'd be a good uh, test in terms of physicality, because we we saw that against Cardiff in the first half. They had Rolls, they had Winto, and mm. uh, I don't I don't know right now looking at the first half. If we are able to play against physical team with sub deep into the half, because if you look at, so, at the allies against Cheltenham, the midfield is very narrow with the defense when they defend. That's, this is this is their strategy. They go with five and three. Then if they get back the ball, Kenny passes it to either Bailey or Perry. They try to progress with the ball a lot, with Winchester and Shirley following at the play, and Bowman going going forward and Euro staying back to try to get two solutions. So it's like that. They're a very balanced team right now. So what you're saying, if it's a football match, we should win. But if 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 the referee decides to swallow the whistle, it could be a tough match for our boys. Yeah, it can be a tough match for our boys because it's a, it's a physical team. I think, of course, I like to see us progress in the cup, and I like to see some of the youngsters uh, have a, a chance tomorrow. But uh, I don't think right now we can afford that because we just have 14 players. <laughs> So yeah, you basically yeah. have to play there the same players, of course. Play the kids. Or play. <laughs> yeah. or, or plays, you know, even look at the, at the left backs, you know, uh, right now. If you, if you don't consider Liel the left back, and I don't consider him a left back to be fair yeah. still, uh, you, you, you still, you just have Byram as an adapted one. And then at the World Club, you just have uh, Keenan Carroll, the son of Seb Carroll, looking at the academy. <laughs> so there's no, there's no no alternative, you know. So mm -hmm. if we play some of the youngsters, it'd be a tough match for them. A good, a good, a good opportunity, really. A good opportunity, and I like to progress, of course. Let's yeah, thank you for that, Andrea. Um, we'll get oh, the Joe, screen. Joe, Joe, I hope you're paying him. Jesus Christ, that was impressive. <laughs> well done, Andrea. That well, was impressive, mate. Andrea, would you play Helder Costa against the team? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I was gonna. He's not registered. He's not registered. Uh, yeah. uh, I don't even know yeah. where he is. Yeah, um, I, I, I didn't even go to the. To be fair, I had a lot of all, all other information too, but they didn't want to. It's all right, bro. It's people, all right. You know? Listen, um, it is. It's it's great, Connor. Just obviously, Shrewsbury aside, obviously we will pick our lineup, and it's going to be tough to do that. But you know, I've heard I've heard a case made by some that that maybe Farka goes relatively the same because it can still be classed as sort of a preseason kind of game. We're still trying to get fully up to speed with his tactics. 
Or do you look at it alternatively and say, we cannot have Ampadu or Gray getting injured. We cannot have another centre-back getting injured. So how do you go about it, Connor? Which, which you know, side do you, uh, do you lean on? <sighs> I guess I guess the question is do you, do you this this sounds and I know everyone's going to go mental in the comment section below but I mean I've just seen tonight Southampton I believe have been beaten by Grimsby Sunderland that, as well I think like Grimsby really yeah, no, it's, no <laughs> sorry Gillingham Gillingham, Gillingham oh come Grimsby. on yeah relax Gabe relax um, so it's it's um, it's one of those where I wonder if Southampton are that bothered. Um, mm. by this. I wonder if Sunderland are that bothered by this. And you look at how threadbare we are right now, and I still think we will be threadbare towards the back end of the window. You do wonder if a cup run is going to be beneficial for this side, which is a clear side in transition at the minute with with, with yeah. minimal outfield players. Um, I mean, I'm literally looking at the rotation. Like you just said, Joe, I do not want to be... You don't want Archie Gray featuring. No, you do no, not want no. Ethan Ampadu fit. So you're looking at the team there and you're looking at, I mean, if they're playing a 4 2 3 1, Shackleton, JB. Um, I, th- I, th- I think I would throw bait in maybe and put Shack at right back. Yeah, yeah. We okay, will yeah. suffer a lot tomorrow. They're, they're I like all, that. They're all physical. I, I, yeah, and, and and you know, with with Andrea's breakdown there, and just some of the key you know bits he was focusing on there, it sounds like it's going to. And you got to think if we do rotate a lot, there's not going to be a lot of cohesion between these kids, and I mean, it's just going to be kids, isn't it? It's, I mean, who yeah. who else is going to be out there? It's going to be just a bunch of our kids against probably a lot of Shrewsbury pl- physical, players. Who, yeah, yeah. yeah, physical team um, who yeah. are clearly are clearly you know as Andrea was saying uh, uh, you know uh, uh, built in a certain way a physical way as well which you're going to get in League One. So it's good. It's going to be difficult. I think it's going to be a very disjointed game. So yeah, I would I would definitely encourage rotation. But I'm a little bit like who? who I mean, what? Who? Uh, for example, who would? Who's going up front? Yeah, exactly. It would be Jaffe, wouldn't it? And uh, yeah. I, I would. I think this to be honest, I play Sonny Perkins. Perkins. What about Sonny yeah, Perkins? It's going to be Greenwood. Greenwood's going to be in the ten, isn't he? It's probably off. He's injured, isn't he? He's injured. Is he? He's right, injured. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. We've got we've got eleven players injured. You know, right. I did, just I'll show you now actually because someone put um someone put a graphic up. I'm going to show you now just how many people are injured. It's fucking insane when you I'd see, love see to it. Get um, I think, minutes. But I think that is. Like, that, that is the look point, though, isn't it? It's, it's when you look at that, it's 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 how. And they, look, I understand this tradition. I understand this heritage yeah. when it comes to cup competitions. We're not going to get anywhere near winning the cup. I'm sorry, even for the most positive person. Um, what is I don't really see when you've got a 46 game season and you've got a threadbare squad like we have when it comes to quality and just general depth. What is mm. the point in advancing largely in this competition? I just, I get it. To, I get it's nice. It's a nice feel good thing. We get a little bit of money as well each and every round, bit of experience maybe. But if you can't fully rotate, Joe, what's the point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any thoughts, Gib? No, I, I agree. I, I hate to yeah. say that I agree with Connor, but it, like, no, uh, <laughs> someone's got to do right. Hundred <laughs> percent. I don't see the, the wisdom of it. I think that this is a good opportunity for some players who. Farkas talked a little bit about like like Ian Paveda saying, "Hey, I want to see more than a couple mm. good good mm. preseason matches." This is like you need to see him come in and make a massive impact from the get go against a team like Shrewsbury, right? Or it's not yeah. necessarily going to indicate promising things to come. This is a guy who's playing for his future, right? So, whereas I don't expect him. I mean, injuries notwithstanding, mm. obviously now with Somerville be, being out, but this for me is like a match for him to, to play well. Everybody's been talking about Joffy needs the ideal setup. Okay, come in and have an impact against a, um, by all accounts, should be much uh, an inferior opponent to us, right? So some of these guys, some of the kids we haven't seen, like, great, uh, play them. Um, but absolutely don't risk your first team. Uh, it's right. going to be hard enough to stay competitive in the league right now without the reinforcements. We don't know when they could come in. I'm still optimistic we'll make signings, but we don't know. We, we don't know. So we have to minimize risk. And but, I'm a, but but even even minimizing risk, if you're, I mean, for me, Perveda, when he came on at the weekend, was excellent. Really, really good when he came on. What happens if you've got a physical Shrewsbury Town team, and we're talking hypotheticals, but this just does seem to happen to Leeds United. If Perveda plays a full 90 minutes and he comes off with an injury tomorrow, or 70 minutes and he comes, you've yeah. then got, it's then the depth option off the bench against Birmingham 
where you mm. weak the side again. And this the thing is with Perveda is he would be a definite option off the bench, as would a Dan James. So th- yeah. this is the problem they're facing now. I, I honestly don't... I mean, Leo Yelder is someone who I'd focus on in this game because I think Yelder maybe struggled a little bit in that first 45. It'd be nice to build his confidence up a little bit. But, um, you know, when you're talking about some players who are going to be featuring in that first team, you, you just... I mean, you, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to minimize risk, aren't we, for the, those league yeah. games? Do you think at center yeah. half, uh, Connor, for uh, for Yelda? No, I play him at left back. You play him at left back? Yeah. I, I guess who else do you play there? Yeah. I, well, I, as well, I don't think he's going to play center back this season, so I don't see the mm-hmm. point in versing him. I don't know how much left back he'll play, though, to be and honest. Especially, yeah. especially you have to, to consider that maybe tomorrow they'll try to use that game to get the cohesion and the chemistry between Cresswell yeah. and Stroud. Because yeah. There, there, there's no experience in there, you know. Without uh, mm. some of the experienced players, we talked a lot about that, about this on the show. You know, there are two young players, of course. Yeah, Chriswell is younger, but they need to to get the group together and. The, try to there has the to be a balance, doesn't there? Like as much as we'd all just go sack it off, there is, I guess, an argument to say is could also be good for some of them to play again to. But again, that's the risk you run, I guess, because Daniel Fark has damned if he does, damned if he don't. Because if we, you know, Leeds fans will be going, oh, we've, you know, not not gone strong enough. Or if he does play someone important and they get injured, we're all going, why did you fucking, you know, waste him in the cup? I know I used it as a stick to beat to beat Jesse with when he played Rodrigo for them. For well, them you have to see how he's going to do with them for together, right? That's what you had to see. You had to see them both but, play at the same time. Oh, no, yeah. For seven minutes, do you remember? Bloody hell. I think, you're, I think it's going to, I think, I think as Duncan Hamilton said there, you, I think you're going to get a real feel of the Leeds United team and how much we care about the competition if they've got like, for yeah. example, Mullen and Chris Moore at the back, mm-hmm. which is no disrespect to those lads, but the, I mean, no, no. they are. They, they're just I was going to say they're just kids but then you got Archie Gray playing for Leeds yeah. as well so it's uh... no but the facts are bro you're right like these sort of players and and I, I don't want to like cast dispersion I'm not seeing enough of them I, I, I did like Chris Moore but let's not forget only last year Noah Kenner was in our side and now he's playing in League One so some of these players might not even make the grade do you know what I mean like yeah. at the level that we endeavour to be at anyway let's be honest yeah. so you know, Noah Kenner went to Scotland and now he's he's in League One. So yeah, on loan, on loan, Joe. On loan, yeah. But even still, it's like, you know, we'd have all been saying, I mean, there'd have been some fans that have been going, give Kenner a chance. <laughs> like, yeah, Put him up front. <laughs> exactly, man. Like, what's his face? Who was it, man, in Championship? I even forget his Edmonds. name now. Uh, actually, actually, Liam Kenner yeah. is the, I think he's, on, he's the only... Uh, Leeds United playing in the Wally seat of the club to get booked without even player a playing game. a minute. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. I walked, he was walked. celebrating mad, wasn't it? Let's let's finish up with the with with the lineup. Let's try and yep. plot out what we how we envisage um him him to to go uh tomorrow. I assume the four two three one we would expect the, the system to, to be the same. Do we do we all expect Darlo to get his first minutes? Yeah. 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 Bye, right. Carl Darlo. I way I like. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you, Connor, to you, just on that actually, while we chat about him, if he plays well, does he start against Birmingham? Because it like like was said earlier, this he hasn't been brought in to be number two, has he? I don't know. It was a, it was a weird one, wasn't it? Because I didn't. I mean, didn't uh, in the in the press conference last week, didn't um, Farker turn around and just say like indefinitely it was going to be Melier? If that's he, what yeah, and, that's yeah. what I found quite odd. It was just like yeah, he's he's mm. definitely going to be Melier, but I don't know if that's just a vote of confidence. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. He did say something along them lines, didn't he? Like if he's if he's fit, he'll be my number one. I think, but yeah, yeah something it, like that. Seems a bit mad, uh, Dallas. So who at right back then? Do we do we do we think Shackleton will play? Because I think Shackleton will go in at right yeah. back. Shackleton, Shackleton, yeah. Because we don't know what's going on with Cody, do we? Have we heard anything? Because no one asked him. I, I think they said he was uh, at the beginning after he missed um, the precision game. Was it against Forest? Was it? Yeah. Mm. On Monaco, mm-hmm. it was like a concussion. But after that, nothing was added or updated on on the state of his form or, or injury. You know. Mm. So I thought today know. they listed him one to two weeks out, out still. So, uh, yeah. like short term. So I would expect him to come back. Who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll still see Bill <laughs> playing yeah. right back. It's just, it's just uh, going bad for him, isn't it? It's going bad for him. 
And the longer they continue to be played, the less people feel. I mean, I'll still back them. I'll still back the old. Yeah, they'll always have you, Joe, and that's nice. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we all man, deserve something in our lives the way you've yeah. been there for Luke Ailing. They will, man. Cooper. I'll ne I'll never ever turn on Luke Ailing. You know, I'll never. <laughs> oh Jesus! Uh, I'll actually, do that for you. <laughs> No, actually, I say that. I went mad at him last time when he got a red card for on Martinelli. I actually said I was done with him for about two games, and then I came back, and I was like, I'm sorry, yeah. Luke. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's like the baby come yeah. back song. Yeah. <laughs> the mad thing is, though, someone actually said to me the other day in the comments, says, Joe, you never, ever forget about Martinelli tearing up drama on his debut, but yet you give Ailing a chance after chance, and I was like... Uh, they've got a point there. What is so it, Joe, to start. <laughs> Joe, what is it with Leeds fans? Honestly, and I mean this without sarcasm. I know my voice is naturally condescending and sarcastic sometimes, but um, that's just my beautiful personality. Anyway, what is it with Leeds fans? <laughs> they cannot let go. Cody Drama had one bad game against a top, top side, and this seems to be the identity for him. Well, you know, he's, he's not ready for the Premier League. First of all, we're not in the Premier League. Like, help me understand why people say this over and over. So it's one game against top opponents. <laughs> Can I just qualify my opinions on drama then? Yeah. So I think a lot of people make statements about his time in the championship without actually watching him. Probably you haven't watched more than five games um, and say that he's the next best thing since sliced bread. I think a lot of people have, have hung on to Cody Drama's agent who said he was going to uh, bloody Dortmund and Newcastle. We all fell for it. He ended up going to Luton. Yes, he got player at Euro Cardiff, but we've all seen they've been in a bit of a shit show for the last few seasons. I think he was the most dribbled past fullback last year in the championship so yeah okay going forward but you know stats aren't aren't the best and i just i just think now that we gassing him up and i haven't seen enough of him and when i did see him in that one game you know and admittedly is one game yeah. he got absolutely murdered and i was like this guy's not ready and i think a lot of it as well bro is probably because Oh, hold on. Yeah, hold for, on. yeah 14 14 Yorks has got it bang on, you know. And I was just going to actually say this 14 14 Yorks. So I wasn't going to. What to, to <laughs> about Bielsa, there's probably a little bit of me who goes, do you know what? You try to stand up to the big man. And I, I'm not I'm not afraid to say that sometimes I do look at things emotionally. So 14 14 Yorks trying to use it. You're a mafia as a... family. I give you plenty of, plenty of credit. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> now, there is probably something in that. Luca, Luca Brazzi, is it? <laughs> yeah, Luca Brazzi, he'll sleep everyone, with the fishes. Yeah. Everyone's, talk, everyone's talking about Joe Ro Roden. Roden. Oh, oh, wow. wow. Yeah, He's season way. long loan. Season long loan. Who, season long loan it? for who's Joe Rodon. Mike who? McGrath. Mike oh, McGrath. Oh, oh yes. I, I strike again. You struck again, <laughs> Andrea said Joe Rodon in the scouting report. He called it Cr Joe Rodon. He did. <laughs> Mate, his strike rate is Andre, unbelievable. You're making us look like oh. mugs here. <laughs> Yo, Joe, I, My I, God. I, no, promise is a promise. Everyone's. <laughs> Andrea. Yo, Andrea's Andrea. called Ampadu and um, and Rodon now. I feel like Andrea would pick me the perfect girlfriend. <laughs> just scatter out, Connor. What, yeah, what, do you, what would the transfer fee from Je the Just Joe channel to One Leads be for uh, for Andre? Oh, Let's don't you dare! With Joe. Don't you dare! Yeah, we, I'll, I'll I'll pay you big big dollar, Andre. Get away from this guy. He's working you to the bone. He's working you to the bone. <laughs> no, 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 honestly, you know, it made, it made sense to me. You know, if you look at the at the players stock in with no opportunities in the Premier League squad, you know, look yeah. at the player passing. Uh, good with his feet. I, I know there's a lot of people saying that Rodon wasn't good recently, but how many opportunities did he have at Spurs? He had one season on loan at Rennes too, outside of England, very different style of football. So for me, if you look at his record in the Championship, it was once he was the he was the perfect. Uh, he made perfect sense to me. So that's why I said that's an excellent you know, Joe thing. Rodon. Me. It's crazy. Also, it's cra the, the thing is though, it's crazy how like we're not doing. Oh no, we're not doing that signing anyway. Like Connor, only you could turn this good no, no, news no, but, of today no, turn no, it no, into I don't a... mean that. No, no, I don't mean that. I just mean like if, if we can get it done that quickly, probably Should off the back of what's happened with Cooper. Probably yeah, yeah, exactly. What's happened with Cooper? I don't like, think that yeah. Connor. We've been hearing all all off season that they've been looking for center half reinforcement. Surely See, that they didn't just start you just the think you just think yesterday. this is just you just think this is just random limited. You think they did it in twelve hours? No, come on. I think so. Everyone tagging me behind. I know, bro. This is the thing. 
I love it. But the the one that I want the most is Polly Apano, man. That's yeah, well, the you, one you, I can't say his name. Bali, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, he Andrea mentioned oh, him I, and just the sold him to I, me. I, I mentioned him and that's Diakos, both of them. And I think the better one is Rodan, so let's get Rodan. Yeah, yeah I know I'm yeah. happy. I'm happy, but the, the that's what I mean. Is... He even he, he even mentioned the uh, the uh, the Greek centre back as well in fleeting. No, but nobody I likes think... to say this guy's name. We just call him the Greek no centre-back. man. Greek, that's Greek great, man. That's know, what that, I called that, him. That, that's cr I'm so happy with that. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, same, same. That. What, you I think on the ball, he's he's great no, as I, well. That, isn't I think he? I think that is a top signing. Yeah, really, yeah, it's, really, it's really a national experience too. He played at the Euros too for Wales. So at the World there we Cup go. Too. Tottenham yeah. have agreed a deal for Wales centre back Joe Roden to join Leeds on a season long loan. Formalities of deal to be followed in coming days. So we'd imagine that's going to be done too, which is. Which is great because it, it's also that Welsh connection again, isn't it? Really, to be fair, he's going to come straight in international stage with Ampadu, with Dan James. So, so that works as well. Happy days. Yeah. Christ, Happy I'm sick. Of, I'm sick of streaming. Fuck you now. <laughs> You're gonna have to go. <laughs> <laughs> update after update. <laughs> That's yeah, what it is, on, mate. You're going to say That's welcome into the One Leeds channel. <laughs> <Joe Rogers. laughs> Sign for um, Leeds United. Yeah. I think. I, I, I'll have to I'll have to dig out the scouting report to do my little YouTube short of Andrea getting it right again. <laughs> this <laughs> class, it's class. Um, it's really insane. It's really insane. If you, if you think about this, you know, we yeah, it's insane. insane. Someone <laughs> needs to employ Andrea at the football club. Is yeah, they I'm do. Saying. They 100% do. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll put it the however, next one. Really. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully. He's only he's available for about three million. Three million, Wh yeah. Three million, three million. Wales, Wales United, by the way. Flipping yeah, out. no, right. Exactly. right. Yeah. Showing the Americans how it's supposed to be done. I like this from Jack. <laughs> oh, dear. Wales over America. I like it though. I'd rather be with <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm only joking, Gabe. I'm only Gabe's, joking. Gabe's seething at that. Go, go yeah, spend some is. time in Wales, then come over to the States and tell me which one you prefer. Oh, oh, oh Welsh people in the chat. Point. Welcome yeah, for me, Wales. Yeah. <laughs> DJ Stadamore on Twitter. You can find me anytime, any day. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I quite like Wales, to be honest. Spent um, just as I don't think this is related to Cooper, club said they wanted a centre back. Also, I, I See, don't Jer, agree, that's mate. My guy no. right there. No, I don't. No, a reasonable it's not, take man. from Uncle Jer. Thank no, shall I tell you what it is? And I, and I, and Jer knows I'm not thingy and I'm not having a go at you. It's people that are lapping up what they got and just just thinking of the best in the club all the time. No, I now I was I, I was talking to someone earlier and okay, we all support the football club, right? We all do that, and I'm not, but. I feel it almost sounds like I'm a journalist or something, but I've been covering Leeds now properly in depth for a good few seasons, is what I'm saying, right? Really? And it, no, but it, really? no, but it, no, but what I'm saying is it is different. So now, so now I see things differently, and I just go, do you know? Normally, I would read a club line and I would go, yeah, 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 they they mean what they say. Now, I maybe it's a bad thing, but I seem to overanalyze everything, and I'm like, "What do they really mean here?" Yeah. Maybe that, I don't know, but, but that's not, I just I, see that's things. Fair enough, Joe. Like, yeah. it's fine to do that. I think that, like, again, we didn't hear about Ampadu. True. We, like, True. I, I just sorry, we heard a couple of hours ago that Liam Cooper would be out for eight weeks. A deal like that, a, a structured one-year loan. Maybe we had made it happen the la in the last couple, like five, six hours. But like you're working on this stuff all off season, you know. Sometimes it takes a little time to come together. Yeah, great, great for Steinson connection too, because yeah. it was a Tottenham and yeah, it, it would have known the situation <laughs> just like we were saying about Jamal Lewis weeks ago. You know, why we don't get Jamal Lewis? Of course, uh, Amund having worked at Newcastle would have known his availability on loan. Uh, he didn't intervene and he went on loan to Watford, so maybe they're looking for another left back. Uh, so on that premise, uh, on that premise, then we're getting another centre back. It I think, we, I, I, I think we need to. I think we need to. Another one yeah. for me, Connor. I think we need another one because we, we, we're still short. You know, we have Cresswell, um, Strauch, Cooper uh, injured right now. And you bring Roden and then you have the youngsters, you know, Mullen and uh, well, you don't yeah. have another, even even one alone, you know, like uh, yesterday did with Doyle, you know, I think can be a good option. I like that signing though. I like that yeah, signing. Yeah, brilliant one. It's a, a good it's signing. It's a really good, do you know what as well? I like how aggressive he is. Every time yeah. I look at Joe Roden, I think he's a very aggressive centre back. I like that. A bit of a leader. Nice. You like yeah. it because it runs with Joe Rogan. Yeah, I do like Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> I do like Joe Rogan a lot. It's nothing but steak and weight training, right, Connor? 
That's it. The one leads lifestyle. I watched him yesterday, actually, like um, on a show, and uh, I think what, it was Joe like... Rogan. No, Joe Rogan, man. Joe oh. Rogan, he, he did like um, he did like eighty press ups just straight off the bat, woof, flat, and just got. He's like, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and kick this deer carcass for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> he's on there. Uh, he's, um, he's on. He's on the old steroids, though, isn't he? So you know, it's got. Do a lot of, lot of, well, he admits it, doesn't he? He's on. Is it oh, human, does he? Gro- human growth hormone or something like that? Yeah, HJ. Oh, there you so. go. Um, I'll tell you what I found out yesterday as well, which I didn't know, which blew my mind and it shows what can be achieved, is um, James English only started four years ago. Did it? Oh, four yeah, years ago. Stream, weren't you? He put, a t- he, put, he put a TikTok out and said, this was me four years ago, and he was off his head at a party drinking and drugs. And then it just shows his journey. And in four years, that guy is basically the top of the mountain. And it's not really like when, when, I, when sorry, I know we're talking absolute shit. No, it's here, fine. But, no, it's but fine. When, it's but, good. but when we're, um, it's interesting that one as well because it's like I look at his setup and I'm never like, oh, his setup's amazing. It's like he just gets good yeah. guests on, doesn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. like the really basic. It's like just mm-hmm. a kitchen table, isn't it? It's a fair yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. But that like, shows but... you though. Yeah, for four years though, bro. Like, wow, what he's done. I remember when he had like Darren G on and that man. <laughs> well, I, I remember when Brian like, oh. started True Geordie. He was like talking about how to get a girlfriend and stuff like that, and then he, <laughs> <laughs> he had Ricky Gervais come on. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It all yeah. happens quickly. But that's like been years, had it? Four years. I just can't believe it was four years. That's like like Connor. You, I guess we've been doing it for years, and look where yeah, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? So it's yeah, like absolutely. the growth is insane. Fucking, fucking losers, aren't we? Really, isn't it? it's <laughs> no, figuring our lives out. Connor, how Speaking many iterations yourself, of bro. facial hair have you had over the four years? <laughs> how many what iterations of facial hair have you had over the four years? Oh, mate, it's it's the the hair. Hair. More, Mora's haircuts, man. It's he's had loads, haircuts, man. Mate. It's the haircuts, yeah. Jesus loads. Christ, yeah. See, I'm, 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 he's had Jack Grealish. You've had Phil Foden. Oh, the uh, Joe Wynn. I've been, I've been pure skin. Yeah, so you've not had the French crop yet, and so you're. I'll, you know. I'll have to figure out what the uh, Joe Road on is. <laughs> you will, you Joe will. Road. <laughs> um, Stacy says the Momo Vlog in the style of King Booker bow down to King Andrea, and of course Joe by a Peroni for Andrea. He is top notch. I will what do say this Andrea you... or Fabrizio and- Andrezano. Is that what they said in the comments? <laughs> uh, <laughs> something in the water in Italy, isn't there? Something in the water in Italy. Uh, who's James, Eng- James English? Someone said, check it out, man. Leeds' is new is. striker. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, in the comments, yeah, Scooby- Scooby D2, are you all right? What's, What's he happened? saying? Something about UFOs the Mona Lisa and, and, and UFOs. I'm concerned about his well being. I don't know. He's talking about Hitler tweaking as well. I don't know about that. So there you go. Uh, we get... this, this, show, <laughs> Joe... this, show's, this show's taking a weird turn. Yeah, oh, it has, hasn't it? Yeah, it definitely has. has. Uh, but this is this is what happens on my show, to be fair, mate. We ended up just, just chatting, chatting. Um, but yeah, look, Joe Roden's on his way in, and that means you know we we, we might as well not bother about the lineup now. Um, <laughs> here's what it is. Uh, Leeds United H- play Shrewsbury H- tomorrow. HMS HMS piss the league, innit? That's what he's it is back now. on. He's back on, man. Joe, he's back Joe, on. Sing it, Joe. Let's we're going to win this back. league. Sing it. Wait, 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 Joe. Wait, wait, wait. Let, let's check this one. Well, so, there's people saying that Fabrizio is reporting it right now. Yeah, he's tweeted yeah, he it has, as well now. So it is done. Yes. We know your sources. We know your sources, Andrea. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't know him. I don't know him. To be fair. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think he's a good. Uh, Good one. There's uh, there's bogus of him in Italy. There's many boguses of him. To be oh, he's the oh, best, is isn't he? He's the yeah, best. There's, yeah, there's people trying to emulate and, and copy him, but yeah, he's, he's very good and professional. To be fair, so that's, Andrea, that's awesome. definitely, bro. Do you get that thing? So people ask me if I know Americans all the time, despite it being a, a country of 350 million people. Do you ever get people <laughs> in your DM saying, "Oh, do you know Fabrizio Romano?" Yeah, yeah. Anyone ever? Uh, <laughs> it, it happens. It happens. Also, also uh, Antenucci. I know Silvestri. I'm the only one I know is Silvestri. Well, you know, Joe and Connor have hung out with the royal family as well. They must. England's a small place. We are from the same town. We are from the same town. So the only one I know Italian connected with Leeds is... And I don't know why, but uh, when I was a journalist, you know, I had some numbers, of course, in my in my phone. I have Chilino's numbers, but I don't know why. And who gave, gave it to you me? You have Chilino's number? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know who gave it to me, honestly. I don't remember. He's not your seventeenth number, is he? He's not. He's not got a purple <laughs> tag attached to him. Do you not remember that night when someone rang him and and recorded him? Yeah, I do. Do you just not going, remember he's, that? He's going <laughs> off, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, going yeah. off it, man. Off his tits, probably. 
<laughs> Do you know what I mean? He was mad, that wasn't it? That, that, was, that was where we thought we were going before this podcast, and now we've got Lord Roden, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, 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 true. It. It's mad. I listened to a podcast with um, David Norris, and um, it was on the Under the Cosh, and they said they all went to see Cellino at the specific time of day because he'd always be white, like wired, basically. They knew when to go see him. Do you know what I mean? They, someone had put camera in toilets, didn't they? Uh, at Ellen Road, <laughs> try to catch him. Serious, Jesus man, it's mad. Christ. This is what was going on at our football club. Um, Gabe, you're looking like this. Honestly, man, I'm, I'm, I'm telling oh, no because, lies. Because, I, because I'm in a state of disarray at what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, no, right. serious. And he's, and, he's not, and he's not the worst owner we've had. No, Believe no, that. exactly. I'll, yeah, I'll find you the... the uh, it's uh, under the cosh, uh, David Norris, and they went in a specific the time of day because he was always off his, off his head. Yeah. Do you remember that press conference when he did it for about two hours and went for a fag and that was sad? He was. If, 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 yeah, my club, yeah. if, if my club wasn't dying at that point, yeah, yeah, if, it, if he was yeah, in charge exactly. of another club, it'd have been it'd been hilarious to watch, wouldn't it? We kind of yeah. kind of getting there a little bit with Chan Siri and Sheffield Wednesday. By the way, watch that space. Yeah, yeah. That's going to deteriorate mm. through the season. And he's already I he's think... already came he's already came out when he was announcing uh, Cisco. And abused Carlton Palmer for ninety yeah. minutes. Yeah. That was a lot. <laughs> you guys like, there was, like, the... Phil's feeling mugged off because, like, every signing we've had, Phil's not had the, had the inside track on. It's almost like the well, club, someone, like, someone's yeah, just don't, said don't that. When's Phil? But <laughs> the funny thing is, right? Like a lot of the articles I've seen, I'm not digging anyone out. It's just clear the 49ers move really, really silently. But like, there was an article done the other day saying interesting greek um two weeks now but when you actually look at it they're just regurgitating the original bit that yeah. was put out on twitter there's not actually any itk stuff Nick Hammond, but because it's silent assassin yeah because it's from the yp it's, it's like gospel but in actual fact when you read it it's just them checking with someone else so yeah they yeah they probably are they'll be fuming actually to be fair um you just so i so i messaged mike said is this the is the Roden signing purely reactive for Cooper being injured or was this planned and he said not too sure mate but the Cooper one was very bad so there you go there you go then there but he's go. not he's not he's not he's not saying anything there really is he but no yeah, yeah, saying, well, another one deep another insight one. by Mike <laughs> yeah I thought he'd have at least said yes or no <laughs> it's a but, deep cut <laughs> yeah. I'm just more impressed that he's in the DMs of Mike McGrath you know what I mean what's I going on here I always give, I always give him a, like, a nice little shout out on the chat he's very good the only reason ever is because he's so good he's like he's, yeah. he's uh, everything he gets is spot on like our mm. end so yeah mm. he's uh he's decent yep. I've only got two there numbers in my phone that's uh Joe's and his I'll wait and give <laughs> He's what such other, a dick, isn't he, man? Andrea, what other dick. Welshmen are we going to sign? Is it going to be Keith for more next? Oh, don't. Well, do you know what? He'd probably do a better job than fucking Bamford, to be fair to the lad. Can't lie. Yeah, he's good. For the Championship, he's, he's very good, if you remember. It depends Keith on more. the system, of course, but at Bournemouth, was good. At Cardiff, uh, at Bournemouth, he wasn't that good, but uh, he was good for the system. Of course, the system at Cardiff was optimal, but he was banging in goals because he... They were just going for him, route one, despite the system being mm. absolutely optimal. Yeah, it'd be a good yeah. player, of course. Uh, it's not my favorite one, but uh, if you look at the system and you're needing a number nine, the only thing I, I, I want I want to agree with is that he's, he doesn't track back and he's not very, he's just statical in certain situations, you know, like Piro. Do, the same thing for do you Piro. See, do you see Joe Roden? Will, will, he, will he play left or right? Right. Is it left? Right. Okay. Right, so, yeah. so we are we expecting Strauch and Roden then? I hope I just can't deal with it. Well, I, I, Pascal Strauch. The same. Around. I'm the same as you. I'm. I'm the case of like I think Strauch's. His head is cooked. He just his decision yeah, making yeah. just gets worse and worse yeah. and worse. And but just, this is where stats shame. don't tell the story because. He was up there for progressive passes. I know. Did you see that, that tweet? But... Everyone's like, "Oh, yeah. star boy!" I'm like, "Did you watch the match?" I exactly. Andrea, that's and, what I mean. And, and, Andre, he can play both, though, can't he? he can play. Yeah, left yeah. And he can right. play I'm both. I was sure check... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I was checking about Wales, you know, because when he plays that with me, and they play uh... three at the back and two wings backs. Wales, Wales yeah, he's played left. He's played, he's, he's played left and right for Wales, oh, though, okay. as well. Yeah, so I was thinking probably... for Tottenham, like I know he's not played much. I swear yeah, he's left, on the left, left of the three. Very recently on yeah. the left, he's playing on the left for Wales. Yeah, so mm. yeah, if he plays on the yeah. left, you play with Crestful maybe on the right. 
Too very I think that might be back. nice to just get some fresh legs in there because look what Byron did. As, you know, Byron came in and, and for me in that little stint, he had looked the best bloody defender of the lot. You know what I mean? So, the thing is though, guys, if he plays, my real concern though is if he plays with Cresswell, who I want to see more of, that's two very slow center halves. Yeah. Gabe, I'm so sick of your negativity, mate. <laughs> but, 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 uh, Gabe, they're, they're good with their feet, you know, I think. Yeah, I, I was, I wasn't you're right. Fan, I, I wasn't a big fan of Cresswell, actually, with uh, the his, uh, his timing in decision-making, you know, but mm -hmm. I liked the, the, what I've seen in preseason and what I've seen when he came on against Cardiff. So he can really improve there, you know. And I think also we should point, point out the fact that Fark has always worked with two, with two centre-backs like with the characteristics of like Roldan and Cresswell, strong, yeah. physical, very tall, uh, mm. like Anley and probably Gibson, Klose, Zimmerman. There were those kind of players. So on the long term, nice. probably he tried to get Roldan and Cresswell. Well, and oh, Roldan yeah. and Cresswell are good marking in the box. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't get another center back, you know. Yeah. They won't go get another. Not a chance. People who think that this is an additional, this is, I'm telling you, they won't. I just can see it now. They're, based on just what Andrea's saying there about Preswell and thing, they'll just do it. They'll, they'll just leave it like that. Yeah. I, I, I unless, you, unless you saw Strau can go get Atsidiakos and you play Roland and Atsidiakos, but is it realistic, really? It's still numbers less, though, isn't it? I think we want yeah. bodies, and I just I don't see it. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, Let's finish up with this. I'm going to press Connor here. Um, has Andrea Radrazani been back in touch lately? I'm sending, I'm sending him a message. Start followed him. He, he's <laughs> offered to buy <laughs> Connor an air con. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know after you exposed it, right? Yeah. Which was a proper heel turn on the man, right? Did yeah. he did he did he come back to you at any point going, why have you released it? I think we all knew he was doing it so you would, but I don't think he felt that he would get the reaction that he did. Do you know what I mean? So I'll I'll the, the sequence of events. So I said to him. Manager before the weekend, Andrea, on the 9th of February. <laughs> Just so casual, like, and then he rads. said, and, and then he said, and then he said, on the 9th of February, after the weekend. And then I said, thanks, Andrea. Slot, presumably, no response. Then I said, on the Sunday, the 12th, why Alfred Schroeder, no response. And then I said, uh, Sunday, the 30th of April, cannot believe you've got this so wrong, Andrea. <laughs> I am. I so blank. Connor having a conversation with the self in his DMs. No, 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 but wait, but wait. Okay, and uh, then he said, yes. "I am broken. I am responsible for this shit. <laughs> Unacceptable. You don't deserve this. Ridiculous." And Even then I you said, "Personally, yeah, as well." Uh, uh, I get into yeah. mean Leeds fans. And let's remind. And let's remember that happened mid game at the Bournemouth game. Yes, During correct, game. mate. This correct. was the wild thing. Wild I was doing the watch along. Like, like what? Say at the time in Andrea, um, Andrea, I think it was. It was oh, when God. I don't know if Bournemouth had scored the third but he responded at 327 so this was full leads meltdown and then <laughs> then i then i said on the third of may any championship managers in mind andrea no response and then i said <laughs> th this this was when we were in absolute meltdown and do you remember when he, he, he leveraged the stadium yeah so i said hope you enjoy sam doria fella thanks for leaving us in this mess clapping emoji <laughs> and that was it Nothing left. Connor's just abused like a, 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 an owner of a football club multiple times. <laughs> just, no but this is the thing. He said, this is my fault. But then when he did the interview with the Athletic, he went, yeah, yeah, it was all Victor. <laughs> Basically, that's what he said. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And then everyone would go, no, he took some responsibility. I was like, fuck off, man. He believed it yeah, all yeah. on Victor. <laughs> yeah. um, is anybody reading yeah. this? Do, do you really think a USA owner is going to invest their full-on capitalist? They extract money. You're right. No American owners ever invest in their clubs. Spot on. Great comment. Mm. Aces. But they, they, this is the point I, I never get with ownership when they go, and I always call it out, they go, well, it's in their best interest for, for us to get promoted. It? It's in the best interest of every single owner of every single yes. 92 clubs to do well. They don't go into a football club and go, right. I'm going to do poorly. Do you know what I mean? It just, it, it doesn't matter. Here's Locks, look, Leicester City fan. I'm just here to find out if Joey's happy with the road on signing. Yeah, I think it's a great signing. Pisses all over Kazadei, Mavadidi, all them <laughs> no marks that Leicester have bought. Anyway, we move. Um, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> The the bad aren't they, Lester? Joe's gone from being in the <laughs> pits to up on cloud nine today. But this is the thing. But then, like, I do, I do get like that though. That's fine. That's fine. Nothing wrong with it, man. I wish no, I had a new signing. In my heart. Yeah, man, you can keep me on. Um, I mean, just, but, don't it also don't it also show that like with 
like we were all so buzzing after Ampadu because we knew what play we were getting. Doesn't it just yeah, show yeah, you yeah. how with a little bit of hope, a little yeah. bit of hope, just bringing in a couple uh-huh. of players, two or three players, it just lifts everybody, doesn't it? And that that's exactly what that's done. I don't think it's a, a flip-flop thing. I'm not saying you were saying yeah. that, Gabe. I'm saying like I think you get criticism anyway for being one side or the other. Yeah, of course, if you mm. if you you know you're putting content out there because leads aren't aren't doing enough, then, you know, you get criticised for that. But if Leeds turn that around and then they bring in profiles, they bring in players, you're obviously going to get excited yeah. about that and get behind the team. I don't yeah, see that exactly. as a... You're not seeing the other side. Like, everybody's yeah. happy that we're bringing in a centre-back, aren't they? Yeah. So, yeah. So, you uh, should uh, react. Yeah. I, I, was re- I was reflecting on this. In my mind, they, they uh, did signing a line off after Wilber left, but they sp- sped up the, the discussions after Cooper got injured for me. Yeah, this so, is I'm just saying you don't make thing. initial contact last night. Hey, I know we no, haven't been no, on the phone so. yet. Like, yeah, yeah, of course it maybe accelerate, but sure maybe they had various options, options, but then they sped up, they speed this up with the loan too. Do you know what? Do you know what I'll say as well? Yeah, like, they're looking for an outright buy. You're right, Andre. Maybe. And, and and again, we have to get look of the centre backs that we knew about prior to the road on leak. We were told Howard Bellis. The Greek guy and Nat Phillips. The Greek guy. <laughs> and it's none of them. <laughs> the Greek guy. <laughs> I don't admit, have you tried to say his name? Try to have a go. I'm fairly sad. I don't know who you're talking about. I studied Greek. don't know who we're talking you know about. Who it is. <laughs> is it the guy from AZ Altmar? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pan- oh, yeah. Pantilos oh, yeah. Chatsadikis or something like that. Yeah, I just was yeah, like, yeah. no, I'll go with the Greek guy. But, but, but what I'm saying is it just shows that not really any of them have a clue because I've said before, like... You had um, Graham Smith telling us Glenn Kamara. Um, Fabrizio Romano told us Mishut, the guy from PSG. Um, we've had Nat Phillips, Hamer, everyone from Phil. And then we've signed Byron, which came out of the blue. Um, well, him training came out of the blue. Yeah. Ampadu, yeah, we're now Rodon. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. So. We have next. Who next? Yeah, oh, mate, don't, we mate. Next. If we get him. Oh, my God. If we get him. Let's get him. Who? I genuinely... Polly and Pano, man. The new Pookie. Pookie 2.0, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Winks is shite, Tom. You're right. What are your thoughts on Winks? You rate him? Nah. Come on. Nah, let's not be yeah, daft. Totally. Let's not be silly. Yeah, exactly. nah, it's exactly. kid. Let's be honest. It's kid. It's Dewsbury Hall, isn't it? It's Dewsbury yeah, Hall. It's not yeah, really exactly. Winks. Yeah. Because the mad thing is, like, um, you, you know, locks. Because I know you're watching, and I know, I know you keep mentioning Winks. Mad thing is, our, our probably one of our worst centre backs in Pascal Strauch had a better uh, progressive pass completion rate than Harry Winks, who basically that is his job in in your team, bro. So, um, what's going on with it, you guys? Get it up, bit, yeah. There seems a bit of sexual tension. What's going on? <laughs> what between me and locks? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> we have a lot of we have a lot of debates in our WhatsApp group. You tried to tell me earlier that Maresca turned down Leeds and Celtic to go to Leicester, and I was like, oh, coincidentally, Leeds United, who's the bit biggest team in the division, and Celtic, where Rogers went. Yeah, of course he did. Do you know what I mean? He just chats beans. It is what it is. Um, <laughs> anyway, well, can, can I ask you a yeah. question, Joe? But before we, yeah. uh, because we were Go talking ahead, about Harry yeah. Winks, there, there are loads of these. Like there are some players that have been sort of not playing for a while or being being relegated to a bench role or whatever that came highly rated for a while. Just their careers have fallen off. Like Ross Barkley is not even thirty. He's a free agent. Yeah, but he's rubbish, isn't he? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, what happened to these players? It's like, I, yeah. Ross Barkley had some good good seasons. Yeah. I'm looking but at, again, uh, I think it comes back to what Connor was saying earlier, and it's not even just from an overplaying perspective. I think they get hyped up too much. They get hyped up to the point where they can't deal with it mentally. You've just to look at, and I obviously went through a lot more as well, but look at the way what happened with Delhi. Do you know what I mean? In yeah, in yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in an aspect as well, because De- Delhi was getting likened to to Paul Gascoigne in terms of quality when yeah. he was at, at his peak, and ultimately, as soon as he started to drop off, we as fans, because we we don't think we think they're not people, hammer him, and that's going to have an effect. And then he's ended up in Turkey, probably thinking, "What's going on here?" Like yeah. I, I was the next Gaza. Barkley, well, Lingard was as getting, well. Like I know he's had some injuries. Hundred like, percent. Thirty years Lingard old. The and same. He's done. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah. He was brilliant. For Lingard's West Ham. exactly the same. You know, yeah. this this happens, doesn't it? In football, you it's you've got to have it up there as well. I think you know because 
I don't know. I don't think they get the support they should. Really, people in the comments. I'm not saying we should sign Ross Barkley. Just you know, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. saying that. Yeah, yeah Gabe, <laughs> Gabe, Gabe is. Gabe said that's me on text. <laughs> <laughs> I said let's sign Ross. Yeah, that's, uh, that's actually, actually the pe- people should remind that. Of course, you can criticize or praise footballer, but never cross the line. You know, I think also with Delhi, a lot of people crossed the line, but also there were a lot of articles. Uh, Pointing out this situation, you know, the the fallen guy, the the phone star, you know, and didn't didn't really help. Of course, his performances right. were dropping, but there was something something behind it. And I I, I think that case, right? yeah, also on on on, on Twitter, there's a lot of uh, abuse that really shouldn't shouldn't happen towards towards other people. They're persons for first and foremost, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, what are you sorry. laughing at? What are you laughing at? Some of the comments. Oh, <laughs> the Grimsby that. striker. Oh. <laughs> anyway, right. Listen, we've we, we've we've done enough. Uh, an hour and uh, an hour and twenty five minutes. Uh, we've we've rattled on enough. Um, we didn't do our lineup. Let's get some score predictions for tomorrow. Now that we've you know Joe Rodon's in, I'm buzzing again. So it's two 0 leads. Let's go. <laughs> This is the truth, though. This is how I feel right now. I've got right. Give me again. I've known this guy for about five years and he never changes. <laughs> <laughs> go on, go on. Give yours. Give yours. <laughs> I was always going for a comfortable 4 0 Leeds win, to be honest. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, Andrea, I'll, score I'll, prediction. I'll, I'll, I'll go 3 go, I'll go, I'll go, uh, 1 Leeds. 3 1. Andrea? 2 uh, 1. 2 1. 2 1. Two, one. Um, yeah, Gib? Um, nil nil. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm gonna say two nil leads. First clean sheet. I just nice. don't see any firepower in that Shrewsbury team that uh Andrea so expertly broke down. Exactly, exactly. Listen, folks, thank you all for watching. Make sure you check out Joe, one what's your leads, prediction? of course. Uh, two nil. I said two nil. Oh, I didn't, I didn't hear you. Yeah, yeah, two nil. Um, at trick by um. <laughs> We're gonna win this league. <laughs> yeah, exactly. By Rodan. By Rodan. <laughs> yeah, by Rodan. We'll win the game tomorrow night. I'll be sat there going, hey, why why couldn't we win the Carabao Cup? Come on. <laughs> we might as well. Give it a go. Love it. Uh no, listen. Thanks for watching. Smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, hit the notification bell. Make sure you check out one leads and of course um Gabe and uh, Andre with their musings on, on Twitter. Um and we'll